Okay, Bill, I need some backup on this. Okay, so I recently got into an argument with a bunch of girls about how diamonds are pointless and have no value. All right, sir, before I go any further, you are a man of my own heart. That's exactly what I would be doing. Yeah, why stand there and try to hit on them and get laid when you can actually piss them off by attacking something that you know they love? What a fucking great guy. You know, if you were a comedian, you wouldn't pander to the audience. You wouldn't be going, ah, back me up, ladies. You'd be like, what are you whores doing, huh? You're all dressed up. Um, anyways. <laughs> anyways. So he gets in this big argument with these girls that diamonds are pointless and have no value. He goes on to say, obviously, I was bombarded with disagreement. I tried to explain to them how almost every other item purchased has some sort of purpose and value, except for diamonds. A TV decodes a signal and projects it on a screen for hours of entertainment. Cars get you to work so you can make a living. Food keeps you alive. Clothes keep you warm. Even 90% of non-essential items do something to prove their value, except diamonds. But of course, they in no way agreed with me. I was told that it didn't matter how much they cost. It was the fact that they make a girl happy. I tried to explain that society forces the idea down guys' throats, uh, that, the must buy, that they must buy a girl jewelry in order to show their girl they love her. Complete bullshit. I think that if a girl needs something bought for her to prove her man loves her, she's in a shitty relationship. I also tried to explain that guys feel like they need to buy an expensive engagement ring in order to make sure the girl says yes. Also, if it isn't good enough, um, all the girlfriends will basically think he's a cheap piece of shit. Again, I was missed with, met with total disagreement. They just disagree with you on that one? Well, maybe you know what they're actually doing is, is the, the reason why they would roll your eyes and call you a cheap piece of shit, not because they feel that, is because they're actually jealous that they didn't get a fucking ring and they, they want to make their girlfriend, even though she's a friend, feel like she's settling for less. And if they can just somehow disrupt it, it will actually fill up that hole between their fucking legs. God, that was mean. All right, also, if it isn't good enough for all the girlfriends, a uh, piece of shit, sorry. Again, I was met with total disagreement. I leave you with this. If you found a rock on the beach, what would you think, um, what would you think it was worth? Nothing, unless someone puts a price on it, and then, uh, oh, Jesus, I was doing so well reading out loud. Let me, re let me start again. I leave you with this. I like this, like I climbed up his mountain and asked him for advice. I leave you with this, my son, and I want you to meditate on this before you go forth and live the rest of your day. I leave you with this. If you found a rock on the beach, what would you think it was worth? Nothing, unless someone puts a price on it, and then another someone is stupid enough to pay for it. Other than that, it's just a fucking rock. Please give me your input on this, and let me know I'm not the only one who feels like this. Um, I, yeah, I totally agree with you on that, of course. Of course I do, and you know something? You left out another major thing about that, is you don't walk down the beach and find a rock, okay? What you do is you have some fucking eight-year-old child in Africa and his whole family digging for them, Half, like, with wearing a thong so they won't steal any of them. You know? Those blood diamonds, and if you steal one, they fucking machete one of your arms off. Sew you up and make you go back into the fucking mine. That's what you're supporting. That's the greatest argument ever. If your girl's pushing for a ring, what you do is you go out and you rent that movie Blood Diamond starring Leonardo DiCaprio. And when she starts pushing you for a ring, just be like, you know what? I love you to death, but I just cannot support you. I just could not support that industry. The, the children that are forced to go into the mines, the senseless violence to... I mean, if I might as well be the guy holding the machete if I go. I just can't in good conscience buy you that ring. Just go like that. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. You know what I mean? And I think it really goes back to that shit where, um, yeah, women want you to suffer. You know what I mean? They want you to go four to eight grand in debt. They want you to do that and go to work every fucking day know, knowing that you're working for their fucking love and the use of their fucking vagina. All right? I know that's very cynical, but you know, what the fuck? And I'm not saying all broads are like that, okay? But a good goddamn majority of them are. And uh, I got a good mind to walk up to each and every one of them and slap the shit out of them. What do you think about that, huh? That's one of my reoccurring dreams that I have, other than cleaner oxygen. Just slap the shit out of them, right? Just get that great open hand 
cheek sound, you know? <laughs> you know, I, normally I would be thinking, ah, oh, fuck, oh, what if this gets out? Nobody's listening to this fucking podcast. You can't even find it. And by the time anybody posts this shit up on YouTube, I'm going to be like, ah, fuck, that was months ago. I'm an entirely different person. I went to church. Um, yeah, I think it is, um, I think it's a really selfish thing, um, especially if your guy is not making a lot of money, to make him go out and blow money on a shiny fucking rock that was dug out of the ground by a fucking eight-year-old, you know? Just because you're not mature enough as an adult to walk up to all your other girlfriends with your engagement ring and making it be something other than a diamond, or at the very least, making it be a diamond that your future husband can afford, you know? It, I, mean, I think most of it goes beyond... Half of it is they want you to suffer, you know? Kiss their fucking feet, you know, and go to fucking work and have to work off this shiny fucking stone. And the other half of it is they want to fucking pull it out in front of all their friends. And you better believe that they want to make all their fucking friends jealous, okay? Okay? And the greatest thing that could ever happen is if one of their friends is already married is if you go a couple carats bigger and they can fucking pull that out. That's like their biggest dick competition is whoever has the shiniest fucking rock. You know what I mean? It really is fucking stupid. But uh, here's some YouTube videos for you to watch this week. Um, YouTube video number one. Somebody uh, sent me this one. This is great. Uh, it's called... Just search cop slaps teacher really hard. And uh, just to give you the backstory, evidently this teacher, female teacher, was getting arrested um, for hitting the children in her class. And uh, she's mad at the cop or whatever, so she just hauls off and slaps the guy. So he takes a moment, pause, and then he fucking slaps her back. And then she starts crying. Of course, the default female emotion. When they want to make you, when they're wrong and they want to make you feel like a dick. It's fucking great. And it's a classic slap sound. He gets her really good and she fucking deserves it. And I love it. And I'm going to be watching it around the holidays so I can get that nice warm feeling to remember my fellow man. All right, here's another one. Um, you got to see this one. And I'm sure by the time uh, my podcast comes out tomorrow. Most of the free world will, will have seen this. Uh, it's called Epic Beard Man Part 1. You have to type that in because uh, it's a classic video. Basically, this dude on the bus starts talking shit to like a 67-year-old dude. They square off, and the old dude wins. And that's all it should be. But, you know, because it's a black dude and a white dude, then everybody has to write a bunch of ignorant racist shit underneath it. Um, yada, yada. Just enjoy it for what it is. Don't read any of the comments if you still want to believe in Santa Claus and that people are good. This is why I don't think Tiger should have to apologize to fans. Because they keep making fans out to be like everybody who's a fan is this great person. If you want to see what the average person is like, go on YouTube and read some of the fucking com- comments that people write. He shouldn't have to fucking apologize to the shit and the filth that's out there. But anyways, it's a great fucking video. But definitely type in Epic Beard Man Part 1, PT1. Um... And check that out because everybody, you know, it's just a great fucking video. And I hate when there's a great, really funny video and then douchebags feel they have to do like a remix and try to piggyback on the funny. And it's never as funny. This is, it's just a fucking, there's a part two. It's awesome. Just watch it. And uh, if if you're at work, look for your boss before you watch it because uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a good laugh. Um, Oh, and let's, uh, let's get on. Okay. Oh, here we go. Recently, I've been trying to uh, guilt you guys. You know, I, I last, you know, a couple weeks ago, I talked about going to church for the first time in a while, and uh, you know, um, I was really annoyed by how they, they, you know, they just use guilt all the time, the Catholic Church. And then I realized, you know, the brilliance of it, and I decided that maybe I too could use a little bit of this Catholic guilt to get you guys to do some of the shit that I want you to do. So here we go. This is the Catholic guilt moment of the week on the Monday Morning Podcast. Friends, each Monday, Bill Burr gets up while still in his underwear and performs a free podcast for you in the name of Jesus. So don't be a cunt. 
Don't download his fucking DVDs for free. Fucking buy a DVD. Pay it forward. Come out to one of his shows. Just do it one fucking time, and then I don't give a shit what you do for the rest of the time. You want to steal everything I ever fucking made, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck, you cunts, you cheap fucks. Who, rather than sitting down and watching my fucking DVD with all the extras that I sat there and edited for God knows what fucking reason, because you're never going to see them, because you, you're content to watch it in eight-minute clips on fucking YouTube. You know you hate your job. You know you hate your wife. You probably don't like your husband. But for 50 minutes each week, you get a fucking breather for free. So don't be a cunt. If I'm in your area, buy a fucking ticket. You know? Buy my DVD for a friend, for a family member. Buy it for Haiti. Whatever the fuck you gotta do. You should see this fat fuck playing this, this organ. Look at him. You know something? That's a hell of a talent, but it won't get you any pussy. That's one of those deals. It's like, dude, you know, you had the right idea. You just picked the wrong instrument. For the love of God, eat an apple. And that's it. That is the Catholic guilt moment of the week. And we fade down the fucking thing, and that's it for the fat fuck on the keyboard. They're always fat, you know? It was the last time you saw somebody in shape playing a fucking organ. Or church organ, you know? <clears throat> so there you go. Actually, you know something else? You know what else would be great? This is what I would like you guys to do, because I'm trying to get people to go on BillBird.com. Why don't you sign, at the very least, at the very least, bring the keyboard back. Sign up for my mailing list. I'm at 9,900 people. And this week, with the help of Jesus, I believe that we can get it over 10,000. 10,000 people on my fucking website. Put your hand on your computer screen. Close your eyes, screen, and make a pledge for Jesus. Make a pledge for BillBird.com. Go fuck yourselves. Jesus ain't coming back. All right, here we go. Um, oh, hey, I got a new fucking diet tip. Don't eat after fucking seven. And when you eat right at seven, have like a salad with some protein in it. Then you drink water the rest of the night and watch your fucking belly melt off. Do some pu push-ups. You get the fucking pecs going. All right, Bill. Uh, big fan of the podcast. Let me start by painting a picture of where my life is right now. I'm 21 years old. Oh, listen to this shit. Recently landed a nice part-time job and I really enjoy. And I'm currently working my way through university which will hopefully provide me with an even better paying job. I'm single, I'm playing in a band, rail my fair share of females accordingly, just got back from overseas and even have more ambitions, maybe to even start doing stand-up comedy. I feel that I'm in the prime existence of my life right now and everything's fucking great. I also feel that the only thing that has the potential to fuck up this good thing for me is my own sperm. All right, you're thinking right. It's exactly what you should be thinking. Uh, who would have thought that the very thing I was so proud to be able to produce when I was 12 years old would terrify me to such an extent um, only nine years later? Uh, recently, a buddy of mine got the news that an ex-girlfriend was pregnant. Fortunately, this girl wound up having a miscarriage. <laughs> Can I please read that sentence out again? Just aloud. Fortunately, this girl wound up having a miscarriage. Uh, but before this event, the reality of fertilization and just how much it could change my life hadn't really dawned on me. Yes, I'm sure fatherhood, fatherhood is very rewarding, a very rewarding experience um, on the path of becoming a man and blah, blah, blah. But I don't, I don't want that, not for a long time. Okay, you're thinking the right thing. Fatherhood is a rewarding thing, but you have to do it with the right person. And you know you don't want it for a long time. Okay, you're thinking. You're thinking really well for a 21-year-old. Let's continue. It plays on my, my, on my mind so much that before I can even fuck a girl, I need to be able to convince myself that I could talk her into an abortion. Oh, Jesus. Uh, so recently, I started contemplating an early life vasectomy. Oh, Jesus. And have been doing my research. The surgery is, is all keyhole, whatever that means, and apparently low risk. However, I feel that when it comes to your balls, any amount of risk can be... Uh, can't be discounted in such a way. So I thought to myself, WWBBD, what would Bill Burr do? So, Bill, what is your take on my situation? All right, the first half of your email, you're coming out strong. You had a great first half, okay? You had a great first half, and then the Saints came out, and they kicked an onside kick, and now you're thinking about having a vasectomy. Fucking stupid. All right? 
Okay, the very fact that when you sit there going, when I'm, I'm about ready to hook up with a girl, the first thing, I have to be able to convince myself that I can talk this woman into having an abortion. That sounds like you're going raw, dude. Which you shouldn't be doing, okay? Why don't you just wear a fucking condom? Wear a condom and then pull out. You do that, you're all fucking set. Just do that. Don't go in and have them snip your fucking nuts. I mean, they say it's reversible. I don't know. Sometimes it isn't, and there's always, like, chaos theory where uh, it might not be reversible. Like, you might be the one in the zillion chance where it isn't reversible, dude. You don't fucking... You know, I'm telling you, at 21, most people don't want to have a kid and can't ever see the moment where they want to have a kid because you want to have fun. But I'm telling you, when you get to be my age, it changes. All of a sudden, you've had your fun, you want to have a kid... You know, and for everybody I know, you know, a lot of comedians, we have kids later on in life because we're trying to make it in this fucking business. And I'm telling you, every one of them who has a kid, um, other than one dude, other than that, all of them have just been like, dude, it's fucking unbelievable. I can't believe I almost didn't do it. So um, I, if you were 41, 42, and you still were feeling strong, I would even say wait till you were 50. But until then, dude, uh, wear a condom. At the very least, dude, you don't want to catch any fucking diseases out there. So uh, I would say wear a condom. Do not, do not get a vasectomy at 21 years of age. You're out of your fucking mind. Don't do that, all right? Why don't you just fucking remove your colon while you're at it and get a fucking colostomy bag? You're way ahead of, you're way, you're thinking way too far down the fucking line. You gonna buy some orthopedic shoes too? Huh? Don't do that shit, okay? Do keep doing what you're doing. Don't have a girlfriend. Fucking bang everything that moves. Play your music, try stand-up. That's what the fuck you're supposed to be doing. Just wear a condom. But don't get a vasectomy. Don't, don't fucking do it. All right? And that's it. That's a- I have issues with, with uh, beautiful women. I really do. This is actually a bit I want to do on stage. And I'll just, I'll, maybe I'll do part of it for you here. Ba- the basic idea. I just, I don't respect them on a certain level. I feel like I had to do something to achieve in life. All they had to do was basically, they, they were born beautiful. This, it's really not an accomplishment. I guess you go to the gym, you stay beautiful. Past a certain age, it is an accomplishment, I guess. But, you know, I don't know. For In order as a guy to get around beautiful women, you have to accomplish all this shit in life. And all they have to do to get to where the fuck you're at after accomplishing all this shit is basically take a shower and feather their hair back like Farrah Fawcett and they're in the fucking VIP. You know? I also don't like them because, uh, I don't know, I don't know. If they're smart, they, if they're smart, they're absolutely stunning, though, I have to admit that. But, you know, if they're, if they're dumb, that's like, it's like you got a Lamborghini, but you find out it has a four-cylinder in it. Or even worse, my fucking hybrid. Did that make any fucking sense, you know? They have that one default emotion, oh my god. And they give 58 different reads. You know, if they see something cute, like a little puppy, they're like, oh my god. You know, if you do something sweet for them, oh my god! They, you know, you do something that they fucking hate, oh my god! Fucking idiots! They got three words floating around in there, and they're in VIP. You know, you slap the fucking spit out of them up.